Uh, hi, I'm Scott. I'm a, I'm a backend engineer, mostly at Deliveroo. Um, I mostly write Ruby and, and like JavaScript in my day job. So uh, I write little bits of Rust here and there at work, but nothing, no production code. Um, and this was like my first kind of proper piece of Rust, more than more than sort of 10, 15 lines. Um, so as a side, uh, a side project, me and, and uh, one of my friends, we like trying to pull apart uh understand pieces of code that like uh we don't understand typically parts of games engines uh and game dev um this was really like our first ever attempt to do this um i had this mobile game that I was playing where you would move around on a screen and your character would shoot when you stop moving and um you just have kind of dodge it's like an arcade kind of game so i wanted to try and pull this out replicate this in originally we had no plans to use rust um but uh, as we started to implement um, pathfinding, which we'll talk about, uh, it became pretty clear that there would be some, there was a pretty big drawbacks of just using JavaScript for it. Um, yeah, like from a high level perspective, the project is just, it's a purely front end project. Uh, all of the parts of um, the game are implemented in sort of vanilla JavaScript, which uh, was a lot of fun to build. And I'm hopefully gonna try and move as much as I can to um, to Rust as possible. Uh, cool. So as part of the game, uh, when you're the player in the middle of the screen, and we, we have to path enemies towards you. Um, there is a sort of dumb, simple way of doing this, which is the uh, kind of uh, dike, what's called a Dijkstra algorithm, uh, where you take you have point A and your point B, and you essentially fan out from point A in all directions until you have encountered point B. And then you draw a line between the two of them. Um, so it's like super inefficient. Um, sorry, I think there's somebody muted. Sorry, somebody unmuted who I'm like picking up my voice. Uh, if you're on call, I think. This background noise coming from someone. It's kind of distracting. Mm. Uh, okay, I think that's it. Cool. Um, thank you, whoever that was. So there's a slightly simple, um, a slightly massively improved, in fact, version of this where um, you perform the same kind of um, iteration, except um, when you make a decision about where, which node you're going to check next, uh, you have calculated a heuristic for that node, which is essentially, um, if you imagine drawing a right angle triangle between that node, that point, and uh, the sort of target or point B that you're going to get to. Um, and calculating the hypotenuse of that triangle or the Euclidean distance between the two. Uh, you calculate this for all of the nodes that you've just um, scanned and then sort them and put them on this uh, potential nodes stack. Uh, so this kind of steps you through um, a quite high level of how that works. Um, like I said, this so we originally implemented this in, um, in JavaScript and uh, it was around 70 or 80 lines of JavaScript. It's not not too horrendous to write, um, but it became pretty clear. Uh, so yeah, with more than about seven or eight enemies on the screen, um, and, and I can send links out afterwards, and you can kind of see see this. So I mean, uh, the frame times would just like skyrocket. Uh, this um, this was super frustrating to work with. Like I kind of thought it would JavaScript, and I pressured, uh on my MacBook Pro would be able to handle a bit more than that. Um, and we kind of talked about different ways to approach this, um, about how we could uh, move things to web workers, how we could reuse paths. Um, and then I had the idea of just sort of, I've been playing around with Rust a little bit on the side, um, doing some kind of code catas and things like that. And I thought about writing it and moving it across to Rust. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we port across the test cases, so we had a set of tests, uh, not many tests for the for the game, but um, tests around the pathfinding code that we've written, um, especially when handling things like diagonals and, and terrain and that kind of thing. Um, from my initial writing a lot of this, uh, I was trying to use, I try to have pointers to everything uh, to try and avoid lots of copying and cloning because I knew that's what JavaScript's doing under the hood um, when you're sorting and pushing onto arrays and things like that. Um, and so I got myself into quite a bit of a mess. Uh, the yeah other things that were that were quite tricky for me were ownership 
uh, I guess everybody has that problem, and that's not really a surprise. Um, but it's really, really satisfying when you can get rid of all the red lines in your editor, and it all just kind of... Uh, the compiler just says, yes, this is okay. Um, yeah, stuff like iterators. Uh, again, I got tripped up quite heavily at the, uh, starting to use these. Um, I had like seven for each time we kind of check a single node um, and, and calculate the nodes around it. I had about seven or eight different dot collects at the end of my error chains. Um, and uh, I just spoke to someone at work who, who writes a bunch of rust and you know, it was like, don't, don't do this. <laughs> uh, you're kind of losing the value of iterators if you, or the lazy part of iterators if you just collect everywhere. Um, so I managed to rewrite that, uh, um, which I'll talk about in the next slide. Um, yeah, again, I was using Mars and Bindgen. I, I struggled to get it working with um, with some parts of my code and ended up, I'm essentially passing strings back and forth right now uh, and serializing in and out of JSON. Um, what's really nice is that the browser DevTools tells, um, I get flame graphs of uh, each of the sort of um, different parts of the stack as I step through from, from JavaScript into, um, into Rust, into WASM code. Um, I the the sort of um, rows in the flame graph can can are are my Rust functions, so I can start to see how long things like serializing and deserializing are. Um, and when I first ran it, I was really worried, but it's actually kind of quick for the stuff I'm doing. They they're not really big objects, um, and they're all kind of the same shape. So, um, yep. There's another. Um, if you're familiar with the pack, there's a with pack plugin called Wasm Pack, and um, this was super easy to to just pull in. Um, I'm using Next.js, and you can kind of expose the Webpack config for that. Um, and yeah, this was this was fairly easy to to pull in. Um, there's other like gotchas about the the GS tooling, um, and here I can happy to answer questions about that stuff. Um, I don't really want to disappear down a rabbit hole of of GS tooling. Um, and yeah, as as Mike said, uh, downloading and importing is is asynchronous, um, which is a little bit strange at first, um, trying to figure out where that goes and, and where you load the code and things like that. But it's actually um, actually makes a lot of sense when I guess when your uh, when your WASM binary gets like larger and larger and larger, um, and you want to start breaking it up. Um, being able to handle uh, in your application logic when and how you load that stuff rather than relying on the browser to do that um, is quite nice. I think it would be if, if uh, it got bigger. Um, so. Yeah, as part of once I had something working with my really really bad collects everywhere, um, I was pointing towards Criterion or something to use to, to benchmark. Um, but what I had was uh, I had a single crate in my JavaScript repo, um, and in the cargo uh, toml file, I'd configured it as a, a dynamic library, which uh, Criterion doesn't know how like it's, it's not generating a standard Rust um, library file, I guess, or binary. Um, so essentially had to split um, split a separate small separate crate that's just a one function that calls the other one. Um, so there's there's a, a function that has the sort of WASM bind gen dependencies and um, and is configured as a, as a as the CDI lib. Um, but we had uh, the sort of pure Rust crate um, that we could use Criterion on. So once we had this set up, then went off and refactored a lot of the iterator chains and pulled everything out of individual functions into one sort of bigger function, which was much, much nicer. Um, and the criterion was able to tell us like this is going sort of uh, 40, 50 percent faster, um, which was really nice. Um, yeah, so I have like a list of things uh, that are like next uh, in, on my list um, for the general game. Um, some of the Rust specific ones are figuring out how to use BindGen to, to actually pass back and forth the objects rather than relying on uh, just passing strings and serializing in and out of them. Um, uh, one of the next things I really want to do is um, for collision detection at the moment, we're just doing like an N squared check uh, for all items on the board. Every item checks with other, every other item um, for, for uh, like projectiles and stuff. Uh, I want to move that over to use a code tree um, and write that all in Rust. Uh, and then, yeah, progressively moving things over that we've written um, as part of the game. Uh, so I think a lot of the DOM APIs that you can, um, you didn't really get to be able to access back in sort of 2018 when uh, WASM was becoming stable. Uh, those are 
sort of uh, much more of those are becoming available. I think so. Um, I'll be able to draw to the canvas and stuff like that from Rust. Um, I think so. That should be cool. Um, and then, yeah, like my usage of Criterion, I've, I've really only given it a tiny little simple benchmark, um, generating some uh, much longer or much further apart points A and B with more terrain in the middle and things like that to be able to um, get at least some more useful data if it would be really good. And then there's just a ton of bugs in the game anyway, because uh, we mostly hacked it together over uh, a few weekends. Um, yeah, I, I included some screenshots in here, um, but I'll share the link to the GitHub repo. Um, for the, I've got the Rust core stuff is up on a, on a public repo on GitHub if you want to take a look for it. Um, like I said, it, it became a few hundred lines of Rust once I'd gotten struct definitions, and um, it's, it's a little bit more robust than Rust, but it's a lot nicer to use and work with. Um, this is the general loop of... Uh, this is the, the start of the recursive function, so when we... We have a node. Uh, we check that we're not in the sort of we haven't reached point B, and then we step through and, and filter off, making sure that this node, that the nodes that we are uh, adding onto the potential nodes, are not things like terrain or we've not visited them before. Um, and then the, the bottom section here is for this doing the same for diagonals. Um, and then yeah, these are like the structs of of stuff I have stored. Um, nothing like. I didn't need to use any of the more complicated advanced types, um, which was quite nice. I, I, I managed to avoid uh, those, but I'm kind of hoping to to go and explore them more and use them. But yeah, I pretty much was able to just use floats and, and vectors um, and the like hash set in a couple of places, which was quite nice. Um, and then this is literally the, the WASM wrapper create. So um, we take in four parameters from JavaScript and uh, where we're, where we're coming from, where we're going to, uh, the size of the boxes in our grid, um, and then uh, a list of um, coordinates, which are terrains, uh, terrain uh, tiles in that grid, to, go, to kind of navigate around. Um, yeah, this is, so there's a couple of links here. I'll, I'll show these in the chat on the Hangout um, for, for people to, to use. Uh, there's a link to play the game if you want to. Um, there is a link to the GitHub repo of the actual uh, implementation and then the, this last link is a uh, if you're interested more about the pathfinding stuff this link is really good to uh, it, it'll vis you can sort of select an algorithm and a heuristic and it will and, and draw walls and move points a and b around and it will um, on this grid and you can see it draw the line between the two points which is um it's pretty interesting it's, it really helps uh, um figure out how things are how things are working um yeah that's uh, that's me